Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Okay, we're here. We're live. Fucking fuck. Suck dicks and rolling. Hey, yeah, queef, jizz, <laughs> anal. Uh, <laughs> Black power. <laughs> I'm looking at my wife's vibrator right here. It's sitting next to me. I'm on the bed. Prove it. Well, I don't want to put it on YouTube. I showed you off camera. All right. I'll smell you f- your fingers later. All right. Here it is. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a taser. <laughs> She's numb down there. <laughs> oh, you're telling me. Uh, I've, I've yeah. had, this has only happened to me twice in my whole life, and both times have been in the middle of the, um, the fucking whatever, quarantine, whatever we're calling it, uh-huh. is I've just been like, I can't have sex. I got nothing. Never had that my whole life. I got, I got to get some blue chew because... Wait, you couldn't get it up? I just... I mean, we didn't even get to a point where it's not up. It was just like, a, do you want to have sex? And I'm like, ah. Yeah. I, I got nothing. Like, I'm just sitting there being like, I can't... And then today, I'm horny all day. Like, I've turned into like a woman who's trying to get pregnant. I'm like, I'm ovulating right now. Oh, you're in heat. Yeah, but like, there's like times where like, my wife's never initiated sex. She's like, we could have sex. And I'm like, ah, Sorry. You're Same. a good kid, but I can't. I'm just like, I've never had that happen ever. Yeah. It's it's not a good feeling, but if you don't want to do it, you don't want to do it. You know, you feel like an old lady. You're like, I got a headache. You're gross. Get away from me, old hag. Well, part of it is I need um, jeans. You got to put your jeans on and your makeup on, and I got to see you out and about. We're oh. in here with sweatpants all day, a pair of slippers that my sister got her. There's no makeup. There's no hairbrush. Really? No, you know, yeah, it's like a, a hoodie. She's dressed like me. Yeah. I got to see head. my wife on stage talking to someone, you know, in, in a pair of jeans and a blouse, maybe. That's still pretty regular. I mean, you went from hoodie to jeans. Not, It's not that crazy. I, I could see if you said cocktail dress or bikini or furry. But, but lady go, jeans. All tight right. Lady jeans. I always say there's nothing hotter. Women always go all out with these blousey, flowy bullshit. They're pastel. Tight jeans, heels, and a tight shirt. That's it. That's yeah. the hottest. I agree. Jeans jeans, and heels. Forget about it. Woo! I mean, come on. And a t-shirt. The, I'll tell you what I hate is that thing with the shoulder cut off. Ah, this little get out the of triangle here. missing. Get yeah. the fuck out of here. Your shoulders stink. I don't mind a shoulder. Like, like it was just a, a, a swoop. And her whole arm comes out. I like that. Well, I mean, if uh, full disclosure or whatever, full the shoulder. I like a shoulder. Yeah. I just don't like when it's just the shoulder exposed. It just looks goofballs. I see. Well, yeah, when they get all wacky with the asymmetry, we got a diamond cut out in, in your armpit. I don't get it. Fuck a diamond. Yeah, shine Mike bright. Diamond. <laughs> um, by the way, have you seen? I want to come back to this, but have you seen the trailer for the Beastie Boys documentary or watched I, the documentary? I have not. I'm I'm dying to see it. Well, it's on Apple TV, but I can already tell all the scenes where they're flashing back and stuff look amazing. But it's a it's an it's a quote unquote experience, Uh-oh. and the two oh, living did, ones are on stage it. talking. Hate it. Hate the talking. I, I'm not gonna be able to handle it. It looks like a one man show. They're like, when we first met, man. Shit was crazy, and I'm like, you can't. It makes me want to throw up to watch two guys watch a documentary, yeah, and comment on. I just, I can't do it. I I'm won't. Totally with you. It feels like a dumb TED talk, and and they're gonna be, they're gonna be wooing too much. You know, they're gonna go, you know, back in Brooklyn in '88, they're gonna go. Ah! It's like, yeah, yeah, we got it. Just give me the information, you cunts. Yeah, give me the film, and uh, I, I hate people. Talk like it's very one man showy, and who wants to watch a movie with the people the movie's about? I, right, I never got that. I'm with you, and also one of them died of uh, the big C, so that's gonna come up. That's gonna have a candlelight vigil. We're gonna have a do a seance and a hug. It's gonna be I brutal. Know. It's too much. Just make the movie. Spike Jones made it, which is nice, and he's friends with them or whatever. He was at the cellar that night. That was exciting. I love Spike Jones. I got a, I got a weird place in my asshole for Spike Jones. 
Yeah, he's terrific. Um, but Skateboard guy, the whole thing. Great movies. Being John Malk. Her. Yes. Uh, that's fun. And then he's Giovanni Ribisi in Lost in Translation. Is that right? Fun. Yeah, and then her is like a response. If you notice, those f- those films are very similar. There's a lot of uh, twin shots in there. Oh, that's big. And Lost in Translation was like Sofia Coppola communicating with Spike Jones, and then her is him talking back to her. It's pretty fun. Wow, I think uh, she did a better job. Yeah, her movie's better, I think. But you know what's funny is I saw like a a, a poll. It's not funny, but somebody was like, which do you prefer? And like the majority preferred her. Oh, really? But I also think it's an internet thing. And Lost Translation was like, oh, three. That's true. So all these whippersnappers saw this movie when they were 14. They never even heard of this other bullshit. Right. And Lost Translation, it's pretty slow. I mean, I remember when it came out, I was like, oh, man, Bill Murray in a, in a full, he's the lead. He's the protagonist. I can't wait. And I remember being a little like, he's not really bringing the heat here. Well, it was it's, subtle. It's slow, but her is not exactly saving Private Ryan. I mean... Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not a uh, tango and cash, but I, I suddenly have Bill Murray as the lead. You see Bill Murray on the poster. I'm going. We're gonna have some zingers, some yucks, some sarcasm. But it was he got he had a half a smile in in three minutes of the movie, and that was it. He's got some funny lines, and there's some there's some jokes. But uh, I mean, that's one of my favorite movies. What about but, that ending, uh, though? That's a little vague, don't you think? Oh, I love that ending. Come on! I, I put that ending in my ass. I come all over my tits. It's a little pretend. I don't want to say pretend, but a little precious. I like the preciousness. I'll tell you, I was, uh, I was just telling the story the other day. I lived here when that movie came out, September 2003. I was going to the New York Film Academy, as did you. Yeah, yeah. And Worked I, was, I had a, a friend, my friend Leslie, who was like, I had a big crush on, and we were buddies we went to the same class the same school whatever and she had a boyfriend at the time and i was like in love with her and i think she had feelings for me we're still friendly now Uh uh-huh and uh now she's married i'm married the whole thing but i i had a crush on her physically emotionally we talked movies we stayed up all night we walked all around the city we bonded over everything wow and then we went and saw that movie oh that's why you love it well that's part of the reason but (laughs) it, it still holds up so we saw that movie and then afterwards, she's like, boy, I really love the end. I just, I love that he just kissed her, you know? That was really awesome. And I'm a fucking moron. And I was like, yeah. Uh, well, take care. And uh, looking back, like she was like, kiss me, you fucking idiot. And like, I was like, you know, I'm a comedian. I'm a sad, I'm on the road. I'm that guy. Yeah. And she's like, you know, she has a husband who's there. And she had a boyfriend. So I was like, ah, I don't want it. She has a boyfriend. I don't know. I'm so insecure. This lady was just feeding me the kiss and i was yeah. like that's neat i get it i get it uh, you want to come up for some coffee that's a little late exactly i'm like i i regret it to this day we ended up uh you know bequeathing each other later but oh you boinked i don't want to you know what i mean she's got she's got a personal life but we we've spent time together down the road when we were both single we met up oh, again, okay but- Okay. Never got to de- she was the one that got away. Of course, it all worked out for both of us. But man, right. that was that moment when she said it. I sh- she should have been like, I love that he kissed her. I'm not like, well, you're going to love this. And then dipped her and kissed ah. her. I could have done it. but It's so funny because, I mean, a couple things on this. One, women love that guy. They love that guy who just dips and, and takes charge and does it. But on the flip anal, if you do that the wrong time, you go to jail. Yeah, bad dip is bad. bad <laughs> you don't have dip. a bad dip. No, that's double dip. You go right to prison. You get you get fired off the movie shoot. So it's this weird balance that the women go, "Hey, you pussy, why don't you make a move?" You're like, "Well, it's like that Louis joke, you know, like why don't you just go yeah. for it?" And he's like, "Well, I just got to go for it on the chance you like being raped." You don't want to be a dipshit. Hey, there it is. A dipshit. <laughs> Dipstick. Um, but anyways, we, I love that uh, movie. But I want to go back to the attractiveness because that's the other thing is like when you're, you're hanging out too much like this with your partner, you become very buddies, which is yes. good. We have a great thing going. We're laughing all day. We're having a good time. But we're a couple of buddies. You don't want to fuck your buddy. I don't want to fuck you. You don't? No, I'm afraid not. Ah, very attractive. I've been waiting to dip you. 
I was waiting for the right moment, but I get I get the play. That we're we're in a tree house. We're eating popcorn. We're making s'mores and telling ghost stories. I got a candle up to my chin like a douche. I'm with you. It's pajamas and and we're playing a uh, boy talk. We're we're playing that board game, girl talk, where you call the boy. You know what I'm talking about? No. Ah, uh, it was big <laughs> in the '90s. <laughs> it was a board game where you call a boy and it had a fake phone. Oh, Girls. I remember that. I think I saw that. I think my sister had that. Yeah, me and the lady are playing that over here. We got candles lit and Amy Mann is on. I got a period. We're playing mousetrap. Aha! Uh-huh. <laughs> but killing it. It is. It is tricky though. It's, it's just you see you're in the sweatpants and you're having giggles, and then we're talking about. God and Christ and eternity. <laughs> like, we're in depth of conversation. Yeah. It's hard to be like, all right, well, let me spit in your asshole and see, see what comes of it, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get it. I get it. It's tough. And and there's, it's like that Seinfeld. I hate, Kate, I hate to keep bringing up sign, but we've, we're pretty used to that. But That's what we do. There's no awkward pauses. The whole thing's one big uh, sleepover. Well, that's the tricky thing about long-term relationships, I think, is you don't... There's nothing naughty about it anymore. Yes. And then I went... You go through naughty fantasies, but even those you start to run out of. You're like, yeah, I'm a fucking 17-year-old pool boy that's, you know, raped your dad or whatever it is. Sure. Those run out of juice, and then you're like, all right, I'm, I got to come up with some new shit or something. I know. And then and then I'm like, man, is my libido gone? Am I a homosexual? Am I a... Uh, a eunuch, and then I go outside and I see the seventy-eight-year-old male woman of color, and I'm like, "Holy shit! Look at those envelopes!" Yeah, that's where it it gets tricky, tricky, Ricky. I don't know what the solution, but to me, seeing my lady in the outside world really helps. She's on stage, yeah. she's doing well. Maybe a couple guys are like, "Hey, what are you doing?" Like a guy wanting to fuck her helps, but no one here wants to fuck her. Well, yeah, just you and the mouse, and he's yeah. dead. <laughs> well, he already tried. <laughs> That's why I had to kill him. I heard he was well hung. By the way, I think I said this already on the uh, Queefs, but I just want to say thanks to the one fucking guy that wrote in and was like, hey, if you see one mouse, you probably have one mouse. Yeah. Because we haven't seen a second mouse. We'd beheaded that one and... There's no other mice. We had one mouse. Well, that's the thing. People like fucking you. They like it a little bit. You know, it's like I always say, when I tweet something and it has a typo in it, I'll delete it real quick and then put the right one up and some guy has to go, oh, second time's a charm. I caught it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was out there in public. You're not a you're not cool. Yeah, I don't know I don't know what that is. It's all it's all ego, I think. People want to I guess there's well, something fun about having an effect if they spook you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They think they know behind the scenes they got one on you or some shit. It's like, no, it was public knowledge. It was out there. I deleted it. But uh, I got I to gotta bring this up there, Fatty. Uh-oh. So my mom and me are connecting more, which sounds good on paper, but it's a real pain in my dick. She's yeah. a talker. She wants to call. She wants to connect. Sounds so, horrible on paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. So she's sending me books. This is, this is her move. Books, Jerry. And... <laughs> <laughs> she sent me book after book, and every day she goes, "Did you get the book?" And I go, "I didn't get it. It's not the. Ma- it's not here. The mailman hasn't come. I haven't gotten the book." And she's like, "All right," and she's pissed, and she's mad at me because the book's not here. <laughs> so that's the first stage of hell. The second one is, "Did you get the book? I got the book." And she goes, "What do you think? It's a book. I got. Uh, let me sit with it for a minute. What? I, I didn't finish it. I just got it today." Yeah, I so, read at three pages every four days. Yeah, exactly. So this is the one I got today. <laughs> now, this is the first prop comedy of all time on Tuesdays, but uh, just take a look at that. <laughs> Come on. This is where we're at here. This is the connection me and my parents have. <laughs> is that rich? Is that gold or what? <laughs> For the folks at home, if, you, if you're not watching the <laughs> uh, list is in shambles, but uh, it's Brad Garrett's biography <laughs> of uh, When the Ball Drops, for, for Everyone Loves Raymond. Brad Garrett, you know, the older brother with the deep voice. Oh, that book sucks. <laughs> <laughs> of 
course it sucks. Dude, but, uh, that reminds me. My mother bought me fucking, uh, <laughs> oh, Jeff Foxworthy. Family is a F word or family is oh. a four letter word or something. Yeah, and yeah. And I remember opening it on Christmas morning and being like, what? Yes, <laughs> like, yes. What? What what is that book called? Family's an F word, or the F word is family. Family's the F word, or something like that. F well, there's F is for family. That's just Bill Burr. Oh shit! Well, that one's good. It's a great title. Whatever the fuck. I know what you're talking. It's a four little word or something. Fuck your mom. I can't remember, but that's oh, the thing. God. It has one inch of comedy involved, <laughs> and they go, "He'll love it." And then. The pressure's on me because they're like, "Did you read it yet?" And I'm like, and I don't want to be like, "It stinks! You're an idiot! <laughs> you, you don't Dude. know me at all, you queef!" Come oh, on! Oh man, you I haven't laughed coos. that hard since fucking Golden Girls season three. That's the third one this week. I got others. The other one's called Humor Code. God, it's so such a bummer. Yeah, I can remember getting uh, a shirt. I, I'm afraid to even say. I don't want to hurt people's feelings. I know. But. I know. Yeah, same, same. I've been in the same boat where you're like, what? Or like my uncle's like, dude, this is your song. This this makes me think of you whenever I hear this. And it's Sheryl Crow, I'm going to soak up the sun. <laughs> Remember that song? <laughs> oh, I'm going to soak up the sun. He's course. like, that's you, baby. And I'm like, meanwhile, I'm in the fucking fetal position under my bed that I'm afraid I'm going to die. I think right. Sheryl Crow fucking sucks assholes. Yeah. And it's just like, is that what you think I'm into? I know, and, and you just take it because you don't want to. It, it'll ruin their whole thought of you. Like they've built this whole image of you in their head, and if you tell them no, it. it I don't want to crush anybody like that. I know. I get stuff like this. Like I went to, uh, you know, Iraq twice and Kuwait to do comedy, and so I think like my uncles are all military guy. So I'll get like memes you look like you're from in boot them. Camp. I do look. I have the look right now, but I'll yeah. get memes of like. You know, Merry Christmas from America, and it's like a B fifty two and a bomb, and like you know, kids burn it, and they're like, they send me that kind of shit. I'm like, I'm not that guy. I know, I'm not the military guy. You know, I'm grateful for people that serve, but you're like, right? I'm not one of those guys. Fuck it. And I'm like, I like Full Metal Jacket and Apocalypse Now because they're art, not right. because I'm like, we fucked them up, bro. I know. God, I'm it's, fucking crying. It's a it's a bummer, but it, yeah, it's too jarring to to tell him no. So you just go with it. Yeah, now you have to like read a few excerpts of Brad Garrett's book. I mean, that fucking headshot is just perfect. The title, it's I it's know. fucking amazing. I know, and and ah, uh, I, I even feel bad for him because I never want to write a book, and when somebody puts it up to a camera, the other guy dies laughing because of how stupid it looks. But, I mean, that uh, is bad. Yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe that's it's tough. funny. This probably some joke. My parent, I remember my parents went and saw him live at the Comedy Connection years ago, and they said that um, the opener was funnier. It was like oh. his opener was a writer for the show. I don't know who it was. Oh wow! But they that's... probably the writer was probably some stand-up comic that got a job punching up, and he's a exactly. killer comic. Probably like Jeff Cesario or somebody like that. You know, it's interesting about Brad Garrett. From what I understand, he was doing better than Romano in stand-up when they, yeah. the show happened. Like he was I like a headliner. It. Romano was kind of a feature. I saw them. Now we're getting real deep in a Garrett world. But I saw him. Uh, they did a. You know, James Lipton used to have like the whole cast on. Remember that? Oh yeah. He had like the Simpsons and all these people, and he had the Ray Romano cast. And Garrett was the only one funny. He was like holding court and being funny in the moment where they the rest of them were all just quiet. Yeah, funny guy from what I understand. I mean, maybe his stand up was great too, and he's eh. great on Seinfeld. Oh, yeah. He that was, was good. another season seven, yeah. He was good in that, yeah. <laughs> you don't try, you do. 52% of all turns are left turns. You know that? Yeah. <laughs> well, last yeah, night right. we had an epic Seinfeld talk. Nah. You, you, me, and Sean Donnelly, who can really, he, he's in there. He's he one of hang. us. Yeah, he can he hang. Can hang. And uh, I was literally in the shower texting with you guys. And I couldn't stop because I kept hearing the boot, boot. And I, I was dying to see what you guys were texting. We all just fucking nerded out on favorite Seinfeld seasons and episodes. Yes. And I was like crying, laughing in the, in the shower. I was in the Same. shower for like 45 minutes like, like fucking Kramer. Yeah. I know. You go, I'm in the shower. And I pictured you, that scene from Goodfellas, where he gets the heist. And he's like, ah, Kara! He's hitting the wall. Yeah. I, that's what I was picturing you doing, but just saying Kramer. Oh, Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy. Um, that's it. Yeah, I mean, 
That is so much fun to me, and I've spent so much time thinking about the best seasons that anytime there's a discussion, I'm like, I got it figured out. I, hold on, I got you. I got it. I got. Yeah. The, I got it all worked out here. I know. And, uh, <laughs> but f- it really is like five, six, and seven. I don't want to get too deep because a lot some people don't watch it. Are just the three best seasons of any show, fucking ever, hands down, no doubt about it. And. Uh, it was so organic how it happened because this is like eleven thirty at night. Donnelly just sends out a text like, "Here's a funny line," and then you throw out a funny line, then I throw out a funny line, and then we start going into it. And it was it wasn't it was so uh, you know we do so many zooms and podcasts and whatnots. It, it felt fun. It, it felt like a hang. Yeah, it was really fun. And uh, what's amazing, and I think we've talked about it before, like a couple of schoolgirls. But what's amazing is like that show they made that show. And we're both here in New York City on the Zoom doing a podcast because of it, essentially. Yeah. That's the whole thing. I know. I know. I, I didn't want to say it, but as you were, we were talking about I was like, I know this guy. I remember I kept thinking that. Like, I know the guy we're talking about. That part is the craziest. It's too I mean, crazy. You I've can't said even it before. Analyze it. It's the most insane thing that's happened in comedy. It's like, insane. The TV credits, the private jets, the fans is nice, and like you know, Soder has an HBO special, which right. is crazy, and Nate is famous. He's like yes. golfing with Mookie Betts, but there's nothing more insane than your friends with Seinfeld. Well, friends, friends is in is, quotes, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if I can argue, the Louis Netflix hug is up there. Well, the Louis thing is insane. That's like the second craziest thing. The hug, like, though, that's insane. Like you're the you're the number one guy that he wants to be with before a special, and he hugs you, and he kept it in. Well, the Louis thing, I always say that the insanity of the Louis relationship is sometimes he calls, and I go, ah, I can't. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like that's yes. that's an insane level. But and we t- I think we talked about this on air. Is like Louis. We've looked up to Louis. We've idolized Louis since like '03. Yeah, we were like 20. Seinfeld. It's like we were 12 years old, and I never as, much, as into as Louis as I was. I never came home every night and watched two hours of Louis every sure. single night for fucking 10 years. Right, right, right. And and not till the scandal thing did was he. I, I don't know. Household name is tough, but like my mom didn't know who he was. Oh really? Because he got real big. I mean, he was he at the big. Oscars and People Magazine. He was Rolling Stone cover and shit. He got big, but I remember as a kid going to visit my grandma and we would talk about Seinfeld. Like, did you see the the episode where Elaine had her nipple out and all that? It was like a thing that our aunts, uncles, cousins. It was oh, like yeah. musty TV. That's I mean, what I'm talking about. The final episode, ninety million people watched. Insane. That's like a third of the country. It's fucking yeah. wild. And then he ruined it all with B movie. Um, but yeah, no, that's the craziest. Yeah, and also, like I, I mentioned it already, but Soder having an HBO special is also fucking bananas. That's but it was like Chris Rock and then Soder. How'd we yeah. get here? Yeah, wild. Time is kooky. Uh, how about this? I went to a party last week. Oh boy. I didn't want to tell you. Here we go. We're all gonna die. Well, I'm starting to loosen my restrictions here. You're loosening your puss. <laughs> well, I just think. You're dilating. At this point, I mean, I've been walking around and doing the hoo-hoos, but we were saying the other day, I'm like, if fucking you and Ari and fucking Big Dick Rogers all came over here, we all watched movies for five hours, and then you left, What? what what's going to happen? That's what I'm saying. It's one thing with the clubs and the restaurants, the sure. travel, I get it, but like, I don't know. I'm, I feel like we could hang out and whatever. All right, I'm coming over. All right, please do. We'll see what's what when that doorbell rings there, Fatty. But so I go to this party. I just said, ah, fuck it. I had a couple drinks in me and a guy, I, I'm not going to say his name, but he texts me and he lives in Chelsea. And I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going over there. I walk over there. It's in a crazy high. I've never been to his house before. It's in a crazy high rise. There's a door guy. The door guy goes, hey, you can't come in unless I take your temperature. And if it's above 100, you're not going upstairs. Interesting. I, I said, oh, wow. Well, what do I do? Pa- take my pants off? Do I bend over? Do I say, ah? And he goes, no, no, I got a gun. And he pointed a gun at my head. It took my temperature. <laughs> True story. Wow. What was the temp? It was uh, 98.8 or something. 
Nice. Because some people, here's what I think you could do. Some people hold just their temperatures different. You could uh-huh. just be like, hey, just to let you know, my run, my normal temperature is 99.6 or something, just in case. Oh, right, right. Because I think well, some people have weird... I remember there's always a guy that's like, my temperature's fucking that's true. 98.2 or whatever the fuck. Yeah, he was that cum guzzler that always wore shorts in winter. Yes, I hate that. That's What's up with that guy? All right. <laughs> so uh, you, got, you passed the test. I passed the test. I go upstairs. They're all doing blow. They're all drinking. It was It was great. Wow. How many people? What are we talking? Six, 20, 50? Nah, six, seven. Wow. Did you yeah. distance or it didn't matter? Nah, high-fiving, wrestling, headlocks, noogies, wet willy, you name it. Wow. Goosing, sounds... credit card check, oil change, the whole nine. And so far you feel good. I'm fine. I'm telling you, I think I had it in January. Yeah, it's, well, it's, I could get, it sounds like a fucking quite a few of us had this fucking thing. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? We need that antibody test. Love an antibody. Well, I'll tell you what, another thing we need. No! Oh! We need a team. You need a team. Remember? <laughs> <clears throat> Folks, here's something you probably need. I, gu- I guarantee you're more stressed and more anxious than you've ever been if you're listening to this. You got Maybe that right. It's starting to settle down now, but if you experience stress or anxiety or chronic pain, or you have trouble sleeping. I mean, I got all that shit once a week. I had it every day. I'm the Cal Ripken of those things. Yes. Well, I'm not alone. You're not alone. Many of us have that. Uh, you probably have gotten yourself some... You need some feels CBD is what I would say. You got to get some CBD. What is feels? Feels is premium. CBD delivered directly to your doorstep. You don't even need to leave the house, and you probably can't right now. What does feels do? Well, it feels naturally, damn it, feels naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. It's easy to take. You place a few drops of feels under your tongue, and you feel the difference within minutes. Now, you've dabbled in this. Tell me about your experience. I can't sleep. I've tried uh, the pills. I've tried marijuana. I've tried all, all everything, booze, you name it, and I can't sleep. But for some reason, CBD knocks me right out because for, for me, the sleeping problem is all my brain just keeps churning. It's just pornographic thoughts and kids and all this. So once that CBD comes in, it just levels you out, mellows you, and I'm, I'm out like a baby. Nice. <clears throat> That's good stuff, and I think we all need a little bit of that. Oh, yeah. Well, you can get yourself some. Feels has me feeling my best every day, and it can help you too. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash Tuesdays, and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's feels, F-E-A-L-S dot com slash Tuesdays. Become a member. Get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. One more time, feels.com slash Tuesdays. That's an unbelievable deal. Free shipping, oh, yeah. 50% off. My Christ. That's lunch. <clears throat> All right. Uh, another one you got to check out, ExpressVPN. They're mm. hooking us up today. Being stuck at home these days, you probably don't think much about the internet privacy on your own home network. If you open a private tab on your browser and no one can see what, what you're up to, right? Well, I hate to bring it to you, Fatty, but your online activity can still be traced. And even if you clear your browsing history, your internet service provider can still see every single website you've ever visited. Yikes. Gross. So, never go online without ExpressVPN again. Hide your history. Make it anonymous. ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% of your data with best-in-class encryption, so your information is always perfect protected. And it's fast. It's the fastest and most trusted on the Internet. Tell them how to do it there, sloppy jalopy. Protect your online activity today. Visit expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays, and you can get an extra three months free... On a one-year package, that's Express, E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Tuesdays. One more time, expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays to learn more and surf safely out there, folks. Surf's up. Hit him in the face with a surfboard. And she didn't even flush. 
think we should change the song or intro ever, or should we be the ones that just go straight through with the one thing? I think we go straight through. People like it. They're always asking about it. I think it's a hit. I say we hang on to it. Yeah, I like it too. Oh, OG. Yes, I don't know who sang it. I don't know where it came from, but uh, it's it's stuck in people's craw in a good way. It's our most asked question is where did this song come from? And I have no idea. I don't, you know, care. But I, I wonder what made that guy a star. Yeah, and he hadn't made a dime off us either. That's for sure. <laughs> Isn't it weird to think that that guy created that? He wrote that thing, sat in the studio. He had the headphones, the cans on. Cats. And he was sitting there going, your radio is spitting at me. And he felt great. He called his mother. Yep. And now it's the song that thousands of people hear every week, and we have no idea who it is. No idea. And I wonder if he listens even. No, I can't imagine. Can't imagine. He seemed like an upright citizen. I think it's, don't you think it's hard to tie our fans down? Because Sarah and I have been reviewing these foreign films on the Patreon, and we got quite a response like we have a lot of people that are well versed in foreign films Uh uh-huh but then every once in a while you know i'll say trump's a fat retard and people go i'm never listening to the show again you piece of shit he's the messiah he's really smart and yeah we got a a real checks mix going you know you dip your hand in you don't know if you're coming up with a pretzel or a cheese doodle and i think that's good i think I think the glue that bonds all our cum guzzling Nazis is the fact that we're irreverent. I think irreverent is the key. You smart people like irreverent and dumb people. It's like The Simpsons. Yes. You know, it's a smartly written show. The character development's great. It's a joke a minute. But it's also a fat guy drinking beer on a couch farting. Yeah, we're farting in the mic. I think we're pretty smart. We read. Yeah. We watch some things. You're well, reading Brad Garrett's bio. Oh, God. But we <laughs> equate, in the in society, we equate farting with dumb, but you can be smart and fart. Smart. We're, we're smart enough to know that farts are funny. Aha. Uh-huh. Which is also why I think Louie works. What do you mean? Because he farts? Well, no, he's got these brilliant takes oh, on the I world. See. Then he talks about jizzing on the corpse. You mean works as in, like, succeeds. I thought you meant he yeah. works like he gets paid to do work. Yeah, a little of both, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. So we got, but I think we got some like highly intelligent people. I think we got some fucking morons and we got everything in between. That's but what I, you want. I feel like we have kind, thoughtful fans for the most part. Yes. Like our fans aren't going out and trolling anybody and, and right. writing on people's walls. Hey, fuck you, whatever. They're just nice. I mean, they'll get defensive in our behalf, which is nice. Right. Also, we're we're kind of every man. You know, we're not uh, tough guy. We're not hot guy. We're not fat guy. We're not short guy. We're a little like we're a little in the mid. We're in the yeah. gooey mid. Yeah, I'm a I'm a lanky herpy guy. Yeah, you're lanky herp. I'm a brillo headed Jew faced queef, and uh, you know you got a fingerprint on your dong, and I got a <laughs> I got a birthmark on mine. We're all over the road. Yeah, it's nice. Well, we thank you for uh, listening. Keep spreading the word. And after, sometimes I get surprised by people that are uh, Tuesdays. I can't believe it. And then do you ever have someone say, someone that you really respect and like and you think is smart and intelligent and fun, and then they're like, hey, I love the podcast. Don't you just go, oh, my God, and you go through everything you've said? Oh, oh, yeah, totally. When someone says I listen to the podcast, all I think is I'm like, this person's heard me talk about eating cum out of my father's ass 500 times. Yeah, I had a kid, I think I might have talked about this, but this kid drove me home from the stand. It was raining, and he's like, I'm a fan. I was like, oh, great. And he's like, he got into his Camry, and I go, how about a ride? He goes, sure. And he starts playing the pod in the car. It was was queued up. And I was like, oh, weird. And you just want to go, "Ah, turn it off. It's weird, you know? And he's like, I'm a huge fan. He was Asian. And I go, well, is there anything you don't like about it? He goes, you're a little hard on Asians. Oh, boy. Well, yeah, we really let him have it. Yeah, and I said, I I do have a hard-on for Asians, and he didn't care for that. So it's weird because he loves it, but as an Asian guy, he was like, I feel like you guys go hard on the the chinks. Yeah, well, good for him uh, for listening. (laughs) (laughs) I love the kid. He's a a sweet kid. He drove me home. Horrible driver. But... uh, (laughs) But uh, I just felt bad at that moment. It, it's one thing you get a tweet, but when they tell you it's sitting next to you while he's got his hand on the wheel and a throwing star, it's a little off-putting. Well, we got, we got a lot. Well, what's our toes? Helen, is it Helen? 
that's always tweeting there with the, uh, I don't want to give out her thing. Helen Hong? I think her name's Helen. I might have made that up. Uh, Asian Helen lady. She comes to all the New York shows. She tweets at us every day. She's sweet as pie. Helen like Hunt? Big apple pie. I think her name's <laughs> Helen. I can't remember, though. I don't know. I, I don't think I know a Helen. Helen back. Um, uh-huh. I think it's... it's yeah, well, yeah, well, I don't want to say her name out there, but I think it's Helen. But anyways, we got Helen. some, we got a black, couple black women, we got two black guys, and uh, several I gays. Wanted. Yeah, yeah, we got a couple Negro, uh, black, <laughs> we got a couple gays. We got, I think we really got a lot, a lot of homosexuals. A lot of comics, too, which is nice. Big fan. That's that's respect. Yeah, a lot of surprise Gays, closeted gays, I think. But then I wonder, do the comics like us because we're talking the road, or is it? Do they think it's funny, or both? I think both. I think they like the the inside business and they like the jokes. And all right, I hope so. You know, you never know. It's a uh, it's a tough world out there. And I got to tell you, I, I want to get on a plane. Don't you? Isn't it weird? I missed the app. I opened my Delta app, and I didn't even recognize it because I've never had the app where I didn't have a flight coming up. Right. Usually you open it, it says your next flight is this. And usually when you open our, we, we open our apps, it says Milwaukee, St. Louis, LA, and you can click on any one. Yes. I've never had no itineraries before oh, in my whole yeah. life. That's true. And I was what thinking you, this last night. This is the longest I haven't been in a hotel in my entire adult life. Wow. Isn't that weird? It's very weird. I miss checking in. I miss, I miss flying. I can't believe I'm saying that. I woke up the other day and I thought I was in a hotel for a second. I had to like snap out of it. I think because my brain is so used to waking up in hotels that it 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 kind of went to a different place. It's strange. It make uh oh oh I'm good. Never mind. Sorry. Every uh, time we record on our individual zooms, when you're talking, my zoom isn't doing anything. So I'm like, fuck, it's not recording. But you're not oh, talking yeah, into good my point. zoom. Good point. Anyways, but yeah, we were watching some movie last night. And they were checking into a hotel, and I was like, God, I miss hotels. That was our whole I life. I know. It's crazy. Just going to, How about going to a restaurant? I'd kill. I'd kill to sit down at a restaurant and uh, what I was, do you do? The thing about watching Curb, the whole premise of Curb is basically interactions. It's the hotel clerk, the guy at the mall, the restaurant, the waiter, the cabbie. That's all gone. Yeah, you can't do a show. There's no quarantine show. But podcasts work. This is what's amazing about the art, like podcast. But we're talking about how there's nothing to talk about. Right. I it's know. It's weird. But it's we still tough. go out. We're making you gotta it, make it work. work. Yeah. Well, what can you do? So tonight, I think we might do. We're trying to keep the weekend weekendy. So we might, get a, we might get a pizza. I got the cookie, by the way. I ordered more Antoine's cookies. Oh, I'm jealous. I got a box. Wow, you can do it. Make it happen. The shipping's a little pricey. Oh, but, really? Uh, well, it's, that's not their fault. That's the shipping. Yeah. But, um, we got the cookies yesterday, and it comes in that beautiful fucking box. And I want to make it clear. We, do, we don't get any commission. If you buy right. Antoine's cookies, I'm telling you to buy Antoine's cookies because I want your life to be happy. Yes, it'll improve with these cookies. I mean, they're top-notch cooks. Every flavor you can ask for. I got all chocolate chip. It's like um, <laughs> Macaulay Culkin. Uh, what's his? Kevin McAllister just gets the large cheese just for himself. That's what I did. I went all chocolate chip, and all of a sudden it come, and Sarah starts poking her nose around. I'm going to oh, have a cookie. Oh, that's the worst. Get out of here, I, piggy. I kicked her right in the cunt. I said, order your own cookies, you son of a bitch. And put some jeans on. <laughs> I might put them in the blender. I mean, these are these are cookies. They're cookies, and boy, you feel it. You chewing those up, and you you feel every stick of butter, every grain of sugar. It's div- divine. Well, I've never chewed anything so slowly in my life because I want it to last. Oh yeah, we um, uh, we got sushi last night. We said fuck. It. She's been cooking like a like an old house n word, and uh, I felt bad. You know, like I said, you know what? i have just just deposited some checks. I'm gonna buy you takeout. Boy, they rape you on that takeout. My God. They upcharge the hell out of you. It's brutal. And everyone's like, Matt, they're like, if you're not tipping 85 bucks to these guys. And I'm like, all right, I guess. I mean, they're still doing the same job. They got masks on. They wear gloves. I go out. That's a good point. So, uh, I, I mean, I tip, obviously. But this whole thing, everyone wants to stay. Every We always talk about this, but like everything's black and white, up and down, 
good or bad. They're like, if you ride your bike and you fuck it, uh, after five o'clock, you're a piece of shit. I'm like, what? I know, I know. They they go too far, and then they act. It's the moral superiority thing again. They want to feel better. They want to seem better than you. Yeah, I'm like, I tip twenty percent. I appreciate it. There. Yeah. And, and you might argue, they got a job. They're working. Aha. Uh-huh. I can't even go to work. I don't even have an option. I think there's a hint of elitism there of like, hey, they're delivery guys, they're fucking uh, brown, throw them a couple extra. You know, they, they have guilt, so they put it on you. Yeah, I, I say uh, tip, nor- don't tip less, obviously. Tip normal, and if you have the extra funds, throw a couple extra bucks in, but uh, I got no fucking job over here. Well, uh, my point is we got the sushi last night because we were like, let's get something you can't make. So we got sushi, and, you know, you get a couple rolls. The whole thing came out to 60 bucks, and I'm like, well, I guess I'll go eat out of the fridge now because you're not full. Yeah, that sucks. I've done that a couple it times sucks. myself. But it's the same, same deal. Like, you know, I don't want to get too financially uh, gay here, but we were doing pretty well before this. Yeah. And I haven't thought about money on a low level in a couple of years. I think about money of like savings. Can I buy a sure. house if something happens? Health insurance. The dentist right. is expensive. But as far as like renting a movie, taking a cab, getting delivery, it hasn't even been a concern. I just <laughs> yeah. go, ah, just put it up. Fuck it. We're doing all right. Right. Because we work every week. I mean, you and I are on the road every single week. Oh, yeah. So that's a good now point. I'm like getting takeout. I'm like, whew. I know. $33. Because before, all that money got replaced. If you spend right. twenty, if you spend 25 bucks on dinner, you do a spot, 25 bucks, you're even. We did you're spots every night. So. Even Steven. Yeah, you do a couple spots, you're 60 bucks, 75 bucks up. You go out to dinner, you spend 50, you're still up. Exactly. So I feel like a, a kid again. I feel like I'm 25 over here. It's not fun. No, it's not. I'm yeah. realizing it's not fun uh, not having an income. Well, you took the money out. I mean, you, you're back to 25 without the booze. Yes. So you took Uh-oh. all the fun part out, and you took all the bad part back. If I was boozing, I mean, this would be the worst. This is actually like a dream come true in my drinking days. <laughs> to have yes. everything shut down. Because the problem with drinking is you're like, everyone else is working, everyone else is doing anything. This is like everyone's evil. I'd, I mean, even, I'd be drinking all day. Right. Oh, God, it's hard, man. I got these bottles at me i drink at night every night i have a couple cocktails but it's hard not to go eh, it's noon fuck it that's how i feel with the cookies i woke up at 10 30 <laughs> i'm like i got 15 antoine's cookies sitting there waiting to go in my ass and uh i'm just counting down until i can have my two cookies and that lasts 40 seconds and then you're right. back to nothing again i know i know Gah! we need to be busy I- i'm the same way we go buy groceries you spend 200 clams you fill up the fridge you open the fridge and you go all right, I guess I'll eat that whole box of waffles. And how about the dishes? Ah! We're, each, we're each doing dishes twice a day. My I hands are dishes. all cut up. They're bleeding. I'm dry. I mean, I I've know. never done so many dishes. I feel like I'm working at a mess hall. Like I'm doing community service here. It's crazy. I'm piling up. I got a rag over one shoulder. I'm, I'm wiping my brow. It's brutal. How about the double dish? When there's no dishes available, so you wash the dishes, then you cook, and then you're like, I guess I'll do the dishes so I don't have to deal with this again. I got uh, a dish sandwich. Right. That's worse than the double dip. It's or, dish, dish cooked dish. <laughs> yes. That's my favorite Asian restaurant. And <laughs> it's, the, it's the worst because you, you put the dish away. You dry it. You put it away. You feel good. And then the lady eats something and uses the dish. I'm like, ah, just use the use a napkin. Use a, a, a license plate. Something. It reminds me of, I remember reading that Larry David used to have one plate and fork. Yeah. I had that when I was in college. But and we got all these plastic because Sarah just keeps the plastic utensil every time we get takeout, which I used to be four times a day. So we're gonna, we might just start using the plastic and just rifling through the plastic bullshit. Use the plastic, especially like if you're like, oh, we got ten days left, go all plastic. And it it levels out because you're like you don't want to use all the plastic shit because the environment. But nobody's moving anywhere. The fish are fucking in the streets. There's dolphins on <laughs> Fifth Avenue. <laughs> I know it's crazy. You saw that that coyote in in Chicago. No, I didn't see the coyote in Chicago. I, am I, I might be going senile. I might have brought this up, but they, there's a shot of Chicago. This is like a week ago. There's a coyote running down Magnificent Mile. No kidding. He's the flicking the mile. bean. What? Isn't it the Miracle Mile? Is it Magnificent? Is it Miracle? 
call it. No, I can't remember. It's definitely an alliteration. Magnificent doesn't sound right. It's too hard no, to spell. It, it didn't. I needed an M. They have the loop. I know they got the loop there. They got the loop and they got the Al Capone and, and the, the L. There's dry, Lakeshore Drive. I know that's big. Lakeshore Drive is big and they got Wicker Park. And then they got the Drake, the big building, oh. the Drake, like from Seinfeld. Drake Hotel, Chicago. Mission Impossible. Um, love Seinfeld. Ebert. Ebert, Siskel. Ch- Chicago's big. You got you got uh, Kanye, and you got Bill Murray, and you got Obama, and you got Oprah. Oh, yeah. Elliot Ness, Al Capone, uh, the Blues Brothers. Ah. A lot White of good Sox. stuff. Two baseball teams. Yeah. The Blues. Jordan. Yes. Yes. Boy, did you folks. watch that fucking doc? What? The Jordan doc. I can't find it. Oh, what's well, on? Well, you probably have to have ESPN Plus. Ah. Or you got to have cable. I got minus. Oh, uh, man. It's something else. But uh, there, Jordan's like, yeah, everyone's going to think I'm a bad person after this. I'm like, not me. That guy could rape all my parents right in front of me. I'd love it. He'd do it if he put them on a craps table. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> He had a great quote. He goes, everyone that watches this is going to think I'm a tyrant, but those people never won anything. Woo-wee. Uh, I heard he was stuff. a douche. Yeah, but he's so fucking great. I love it. Don't give it away, but didn't his dad die on the side of the highway by a couple of mobsters? Well, we haven't got to that point of the dock yet because it's 10 hours. They're only two hours in. Oh, wow. But they, it's all that. the big rumor is that it's uh, gambling debts. Like, it just happened yes. to be that Michael Jordan's dad gets fucking shot to death. I wonder if they were just just kind of eye like shadowing him. Mm, most likely. Wow. I wonder like what his shadow. dad was like. Cause, I, I, you know what I watched last night that you that I recommend throwing back on is Talking Funny. Which one's that? Oh, that's the HBO one. They got that just got they tried to cancel him again recently. I, I saw that. That's why I watched it, and and it's great. Like Louis says the N word eight times. Uh, Louis and Seinfeld going back and forth because it was Louis was still the new guy then. Right, but he was big. He was big, but he was like the youngest, and they talk about him opening for Seinfeld, and he said Seinfeld yelled at him, and I went, yeah, it's not just me. Yeah, because I think Louis brought him up as like, he's the funniest guy, this guy's the best comic or something. Yeah, it's fascinating watching it now. It's it, it feels it's like when we said watching Comedian. You watch Comedian now versus 10 years ago, it's a whole other movie. Sorry, Uh-oh. we're getting a we're getting a text from the producer here. Uh oh, that's not good. Oh wow! Oh, so this is like a this is like a call in. Shelby just called in. What? One guy killed his dad. Another helped him get rid of the body, and the non murderer is still wrongly in jail. How about that? Who? What? Huh? I assume this is about Seinfeld's parents. Oh, all right. <laughs> no, I think it's the Jordan thing. Oh, oh, a guy killed his dad. Another guy helped get rid of the body, and the, the guy who didn't kill him is in jail. Wow. Wrongfully. Good, I like uh, that. Good contribution, Shelb. Shelbo. Um, wait, what were we talking about? Uh, oh, oh, Talking talk- Funny. It's a different movie now. How so? Well, I mean, not to keep bringing it up, but now you know the, the CK man pretty well, and I know the big Jew... And now seeing it from those eyes is way different. Like when when that came out, was that 2012, 2013? So I think around there, yeah. I mean, I was that was seven years ago. That was, we were in a whole different lifestyle. Yeah, completely. I was in a room that was 14 feet by seven feet. I could touch both walls of my bedroom. You there slept you go. There one time. So now you watch, you go, I know that guy, and I I had dinner with that guy at a diner when your thing came out or when your thing got shot. So, like, the whole thing's different. And then, like, I've had a little moment with Gervais or two and Chris Rock's uh, whatever. So, it felt different. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wild. I mean, that thing, I remember, like, blowing my mind that they were going to have comedians talking on it. Because I feel like podcasts weren't huge then. Yes, that's right. Or maybe they were getting big. But the idea of, like, four comics talking was really something. It was my, And those, because they picked a good batch. It wasn't like, we're going to have Fluffy and Larry the Cable Guy crack it up together you know it wasn't that bullshit it was like some good choices well i think gervais put it together if i'm not yes. uh, mistaken and they zing him quite a bit did he do the whistle right 
Yeah, it's too much. I remember that. But yeah, that is uh, that's good stuff. Maybe I'll rewatch that soon. I just bought the uh, on upon Tuesday's requests. I bought the Criterion Channel. Ah, which is this movie channel? It's got like thousands of movies: art house, foreign films, documentaries, commentaries. It's wild. It's overwhelming. All right, let me know so what you I'm, think there, Sloppy I'm Joe. Rifling through that, I'm so bad with money. It was a hundred bucks. I'm just Yo! like, yeah, I'll take it. And I'm such an idiot that I'm like, it's a hundred bucks, but now we get free movies. I consider them free, but I already uh, paid a hundred dollars. Right, right. Isn't that funny how that works? My my mom is is a member of that master class jizz you know that thing oh yeah yeah master ass well she let me watch a few and they're pretty good yeah they seem like fun how long is it, is it 10 hours to half hour there's a zillion minutes? of them but there's like charlie kaufman on writing steve martin on comedy uh whoever the fuck on uh sam mendes on directing and each one has a good little nugget they're probably each like three hours each wow is there a brad garrett or do you gotta read the book <laughs> <laughs> the book was better. You got to go book. Boy, that headshot. Show me that headshot again. Oof. Oh, man. How about that, huh? It's so hard to pull off a headshot that doesn't look ridiculous down the road. The problem is the goofy, too goofy is bad, and then the too tough is bad. You know, this one, like... Oh, the tough. Or... I think I, oh, go ahead. Or, or the pontificating, you know, like... Yeah, it's really bad. I mean, this just the eyebrow thing sucks. Uh, I yeah. can't even do that. But what are you, The Rock? <laughs> I remember there was a comic. He was like an open micer up in Boston. And he was like, I thought about having my headshot be my pit bull. He's got a pit bull. He's like, no one's ever done that before. And I'm like, yeah, because that's not your face. Right. You're right. Supposed to be able to see what you, you look like. Yeah. We need you. We need you for the website. It's such a dumb mindset. I'm like, I'm going to get an 8x10 of the inside of my asshole and have that be my headshot. Right. Work. And he's not even known as, like, there's already the pit bull of comedy. Yeah. And also, pit bulls suck. I don't want a pit bull. It's a dumb <laughs> nickname. Is that Slayton? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the pit bull. Get out of here. Shut up. I know. What is that? Tough guy shit. Like, are you funny or are you not funny? Stop trying to threaten me. And he is funny. Just be the funny guy. I know. I know. But. I don't know. Dice fucked that up, I think. Yeah, it's weird, but I don't All know. Right. What are you going to do? I got I to gotta read this Brad Garrett book, I'll tell you that. That seems like fun. I'm reading Woody's book, Apropos oh, of Nothing. I heard it's great. I'm loving it. I mean, I am just in there loving it. I had to order it from England because they don't fucking sell it anywhere. <laughs> they shipped the, it from England. That's insane because he got canceled or whatever? Because he's canceled. He raped a couple of kids or whatever, but he's still very funny. But they here's what's him. crazy, and I don't want to get uh, you know political or whatever, but the whole publishing company, they walked out. like They did a big walkout, and so they dropped the book. But you're like, you work at a publishing company... And you want to ban books. Oh. That seems a little bizarre to me. Like also, you're in the book business, and you're like, no way. This guy shouldn't be allowed to have a book. Right. But Isn't that strange? And you knew who he was. It's not like he, did, he didn't rape the Asian chick last week. <laughs> you know, like they knew who he was signing up. Well, I guess the, the higher up signed him, and then it was all the employees were the ones that were like, we're walking out if you guys want to. They kind of oh, strike. See. I but see. It just seems a little bit along the lines of banning books. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm ignorant, but it seems a little yeah. fascist to me. But it's maybe an interesting I'm crazy. take. I like, I like where you're coming from. That's interesting. Yeah, you got something there. But the book is uh, fantastic, and I understand Woody's a bad guy or whatever. But uh, I love his writing. The great artist. I, I was, I read that uh, Larry David New York Times piece. And they're like, what are you reading now? He's like, I'm reading the uh, the Woody book. It's amazing. And then I read the comments, and all these people are like, I loved it till he mentioned he read the Woody book. Now I'm out. I'm like, you're out because he's reading a book? What are we doing? Yeah, they're I, mad. Yeah. If you catch me reading the, the Koran, are you going to leave me? <laughs> you know? Um, has your mother sent that yet? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. She doesn't think it's that funny. So I think it's gold. It'd be fun to take the jacket off the Brad Garrett and put it on a copy of the Koran. That's true. Yeah. Little, uh, a good, little, little book hijab. Little messiah. Um, well, I might have to start to wrap up soon because it's 7 p.m., which is 6.58. My wife is doing a Zoom with her family. 
Ooh. And I'm like, if my mother-in-law overhears me talking about coming in my dad's face again, I'm going to be out of the family. Wait, wait. You guys aren't double dipping, are you? What do you mean? Like your family and her family? No, no. Oh. But I'm in the other room. I'm doing the podcast over here, and I'm so nervous that she's going to be on the air, and she's gonna, it's going to bleed through the walls. I see. And she's going to be like, oh, how's Joe doing? You just hear me go, so I came in her tits and made her eat it. Yeah, good point. Good point. We've already we've trashed Asians enough. They've heard it. You don't want to do that in front of them. Um, but yeah, man, it's fucking weird. It's the weekend. I'm gonna eat some Antoine's cookies. We might get some Chinese food or uh, maybe some pizza. And uh, my reflux. I'm just gonna have to have throat cancer. I think. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Uh, I'm, I might order another box as well. I miss them already. Yeah, get a box. What? Is, would your lady just come home? I, I heard some keys jingling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Say hello. Hi. Hey, hey May. Hey. 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 Look at that. Oh, nice bald. to see you. He looks like a Make a Wish kid. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, I can't hear him. Does he know that? Oh, oh. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, whatever. Good point. Wait, uh, may May the force be with you. May the what? <laughs> uh, it was just a May pun. I may don't know. the fourth be with you. Force be with you. All yeah, right, it was just May. You. Her name's May. Nice to see you, buddy. You look great. Bye. Thank you. You hey, too. Hey, take care. Was that for me or her? Ah, uh, whatever. All right. Take it easy. Get well soon. You look ill. I get a little nervous on the weekends. <laughs> take it easy there, Season Freddy. Seven. We'll see you next week. Talking to me? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's the end. All right. Yeah. All right. Queef, praise Good night, all everybody. All right. Thanks. We love you. I think Mark got in trouble. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Come back again next week. We love you. Hit the Patreon. Patreon. Queep. Bye.